Hey, it's Rich, the Louisiana Hobby Guy. And today we are in the laser lab, but we're not making a project today. <laughs> what we're doing is a quick tutorial. So I've listened to what viewers have to say. They want to spend less time watching videos, and I'm going to do an entire series of short videos that you can get in and out of in just a few minutes and focus on just one particular thing. Today we're going to focus on raised lettering. I got a lot of response on my business card coin with the raised lettering, the 3D look lettering there. And I decided that today uh, we're going to talk about raised lettering using layers and how to design. And I'll also throw in uh, a little uh, shape tip, how to make graphics just using shapes. So uh, let's do this fast. Let's jump over into Lightburn and get started. All right, so let's talk for a moment about raised lettering or otherwise known as relief fill. And this is the coin that I make right here. I'll put a better picture on the screen. But uh, this, I engrave away the background and I leave the lettering proud. So it's raised up and so is the edge over here. And I'm giving you sort of an example over here on the left of what I've done here. Let's talk about how to uh, actually do this. So I've taken away my background here. A lot of people have said that it's a little confusing when doing video. So we got rid of that. We're just gonna use this white space right here. And in here, there are a couple of items. So we've got this layer. Okay, I wish I can get rid of that. We've got this layer. <laughs> and we've got this layer. They're all on the same layer. Let me get rid of this text. So how do you do raised lettering? When you first type out your text, you have something like this. And you may be viewing this in a different view. You may be on the wireframe here. So you're just seeing it like that. When you're doing raised lettering, I suggest that you go to Window and click on Filled Course so that you can see what's happening in live time. So how do you relief this? Well, it's very, very simple. All you have to do is just draw out another object on the same layer. Now, you see that we have that object. It's not on the same layer, but if I put it on the black layer, now all of a sudden we have raised lettering and there's all types of things that you can do to the shape you can add shapes to it you can do all types of things we can come down here on the bottom left to the radius and uh, we can put a let's say a, a five millimeter radius on this like that just by clicking on the corners once we've set it and if nothing happens that means that your radius is too large for the graphic so there we have a radius and then if you wanted to get a border it's really very simple just using the offset fill right over here so you can offset fill this now and you see we've lost our raised lettering so let's just bring this down a little bit to four like that or maybe even three okay and we're going to do round and we're going to do outer shapes only and select resulting objects you can simplify results it doesn't matter on a basic shape like this and we're just going to say okay now that has selected that because we've said select the result the results so if we offset it again just going to do this one more time just pressing that and saying okay now we have another layer and we have the border like you saw on my coin it's really just that simple and why would you want to use this well you might want to make something like my coin as an example or you might want to do something from scratch so let's say that uh, let's draw out an oval uh, something like that I'm gonna select it and I'm just gonna turn it a little bit similar to that and I'm going to now duplicate this oval so I'll press control and the letter D on my keyboard I've duplicated it it has selected the duplicate and all I'm gonna do is come up here and I'm going to mirror this object like that and now I can move this object 
off to the right some, grab a circle tool, hold shift, draw a perfect circle like that, group these two up on the top together by clicking group, and then I can align these like that, and all of a sudden I have got a Mickey Mouse shape. And all we have to do at this point is just select everything and then come over here to the weld and there we've got a Mickey Mouse head. Believe it or not folks, this really simple 20 second design will cost you about $3 on Etsy. You can go look that up. Now, if we take and we put some text like say uh, a name like that and we drag this over onto here you'll see that we've got and actually let me select both of these and align it like that so now you can see we've got a child's name but if we select the outer one and we do an offset and let's do this offset at two like that say okay and then immediately come in and do another offset of two we now have a relief engraving of a Mickey Mouse head. It's not Mickey Mouse because you saw me just draw it a second ago. So this is, you know, like a perfectly fine design to use. And we have the name that is now in relief. So if we wanted to paint this piece of wood and this engraving will take away all of the paint, that we've just painted and so will this black line on the outside but this part over here where the name is will still be painted the same color as well as all white space that's in this design so you'll have a beautiful design with a relief engraving just by using the offset tool twice so i hope you enjoyed this uh demonstration here in liper in this tutorial because once you learn how to do this and follow along with this video in your version of Lightburn, once you learn how to do this, you can do so many different designs. It's incredible. And I just want to show you one more because um, somebody actually asked for this. And one of my comments in my video was, how do I add a shape to the corner of this over here? And that's pretty easy. So let's just grab the um, polygon tool over here let's hold shift and draw out a polygon and let's come over to the shape properties tab over here on the right if you don't see that you can right click here and just select shape properties and in here let's go with uh let's go with five like that because we're going to make a star and then we will select that item come to the top and mirror it right here so now we've got our item right here and let's go into the wireframe so that you can see this better I'm going to take a pencil tool now on the left hand side I'm going to start here and I'm going to draw out my star so I'm just going to go to every corner and when it turns into a bullseye I'm going to click the next one I'm going to click and you see I still have that attached but if I come to this point right here and click where it turns into a bullseye, it closes that shape so that it's not attached anymore. And there you can see we've got our star. So uh, we can just take this part that we used to design off. And as you can see here, we've got these extra lines in the middle. So what we're going to do at this point is we're just going to offset this shape. Click the offset tool. We're going to set the offset to zero like that and now we've got a star so this is the second shape that we want to add to the corner of this shape here so let's turn it like that and let's bring it to a point where we can still see that it's a star maybe something like that and now we can come back into the fill so you can see how that looks and if we drag over both of these now and just weld them together, we now have a star out of the corner. Or you could do that with an oval. You can take and put an oval over the corner 
move it around. You can do this any way that you want, just welding them together. And you can uh, even add another square if you wanted to. So I just wanted to point this out because this was a question that I got uh, in one of my videos. Okay, so I've made a few changes to the actual Mickey Mouse file um, that I'm going to show you right now. And then afterwards, I'll show you the actual results. Okay, so here is the file that I designed that you saw me design um, just a few minutes ago. And what I've done is I've taken, changed the font to impact. And then I also did an offset on that font, made it smaller so that I could have this blue line after fill that you see right here. Or not line after fill. This is a separate layer. I, should, I shouldn't have said line after fill. It's, an, it's a separate layer. So I've also added another layer outside here. See if I zoom in on that. That is a red cut layer. And I wound up with my final product. So for those interested in the... I, I did do something custom here. So I took a piece of Baltic birch and I made it into, um, I guess, sort of like an aged look. I'm going to show you in one second, but I just want to show you what I did to change that engraving. And a lot of people are, just don't understand these settings. And there's even a lot of creators out there that tell you the wrong effects for doing things. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to have a very light engraving, but I want it to look like a wood stain. I also wanted to get the 3D effect with the raised lettering, with the relief fill, and uh, here's what I did. So in Lightburn here, on the black layer, which is everything that's being engraved off, I set this to, now I am using the uh, Roly Lasermatic. So that is the Lasermatic 30 that I'm using in this video. And I set this to 17,500 speed, 75% power. I put this into a crosshatch and then I changed the line interval all the way down to uh, 175 LPI, DPI, whatever you want to call that, or 0.145 line interval. And I did a scan angle at 45. So now this is going to scan at 45 this way and then come back scan at 45 this way. And I'm just going to get the, the best looking result that you can possibly imagine because I'm not going with or against the wood grain. So if I did this at a zero scan, which is how most people do it, I would be going with the grain and it would leave some choppy points in there where the grain got in the way. If I were doing this at a 90 degree scan where it was going up and down on the Y, well, then I would have broken some of those, some of that grain and it would give me a completely different result. But I decided that I'm going to do the 45 degree angle so as not to disrupt or even move with the grain, but to move across it. And then to even this out and to get the right coloring that I wanted, I did the opposite, which is the crosshatch. So that is the first layer. The blue layer, which is the extra line of text that I put inside here, I wanted to give some standout definition, definition to the name Michaela. So I put this in line mode at 6,000 millimeters per minute and 55% power, and I did two passes on it. And the cut, well, that doesn't really matter. 570, 100%. And there we go. So that is the entire process right there. And now I'm going to show you the result of that. So let's switch back and take a look and see what we've got. Okay, so we're back. And uh, I guess this is the moment you've all been waiting for. This is the final product right here. And there you can see the very unique look that I got to the wood grain there with no anomalies whatsoever. You can see that the word Michaela is standing proud. The edges are standing proud of the wood grain. 
and you can also see that beautiful line that I've got in there on the text, which really, really defines it. So that's, you know, that's part of learning this is learning how to do your settings and how to get, you know, the right type of engraving for the result that you're looking for. And in this case, I wanted to change it so that it looks like a completely different type of wood. And I think I achieved that. And let's look at the back real quick. So there's the original. That's the back side. And that is the front side. Now, this actually looks like an expensive piece of wood when actually it's just birch plywood. So uh, there are a, a few settings tips. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video today and you learned how to uh, reverse engrave, some people call it. Uh, other people, you know, they'll, they'll call it um, relief fill. That's probably the most technical right way to say it is release, relief fill. And I uh, hope you learned something about merging shapes. And I threw in that extra little tip there on the start for those people who wanted to learn how to do that. So uh, I hope you enjoyed today's video as much as I enjoyed making it. And I'm gonna make a lot more of these shorter videos where I'm focused on topic. I've got the keywords in the description and in the titles and it's easy to search on my channel and find exactly what you're looking for. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.